Hello. Welcome back. Right, as you can hear, I'm slowly getting better. But I've had a nightmare to try and get my voice back. I was squeaking all last week. Couldn't get a word out. It really did. Wifey seems all right. I mean, she felt really ill. Um, but um, she didn't lose her voice. Just this one. I suppose it was a bit of a blessing. Anyway, today I'm going to do a vinyl first play of this little beaut. Creams. Disraeli Gears. Uh, this is obviously the uh, the real issue. So let's have a little open up and have a look, shall we? Yeah, proper struggled this week, guys. Proper, proper struggled. As you, well, you could have heard if you'd have watched the Tiger Lilies video I did. I could hardly sound like Gollum. Dreadful. So. I ain't too worried about the back to black hype sticker. This is an amazing cover, isn't it? Look. Apparently Eric Clapton was a big Nikon fan. I'm using a Nikon here, believe it or not. So let's have a look at the uh Oh nice. Ooh. Does feel nice. Holly lined. Oh, wowza. Oh, that is just gorgeous. Polydor. Look at that. Look. Perfect. Ooh, I can't wait to get it on. Can't wait to get it on. I've been itching to play this one for a while. Yeah, and obviously the uh, the download card for it. Got quite a lot of them laying around now. Right, so what do we know about Cream's Disraeli Gears? Right, Disraeli Gears is the second studio album by Cream, um, who formed the previous year, and that is Ginger Baker on drums, uh, Eric Clapton, guitarist and singer, and Jack Bruce, lead singer and bass. Uh, the LP was released on the 2nd of November 1967 on the Reaction label. The album features two singles from it, and that is Strange Brew and Sunshine of Your Love. Now, the album title came about according to Ginger Baker. Uh, Mick Turner was a roadie, and he was driving with Eric Clapton in an Austin Westminster. And Eric was talking about getting a racing bicycle, you know, a racing bike. And Mick driving went, oh, yeah, with Disraeli gears, uh, meaning derailleur gears. Um... And apparently Ginger Baker said, we just fell over. And they all said, we have to call the album this. Disraeli Gears. Uh, the album was recorded at Atlantic Studio in New York during May of 1967. Uh, this reissue was re-released on Polydor Records on 180 gram vinyl on the 18th of May 2015. The exploding... Day Glow style cover art was created by Australian artist Martin Sharp, uh, who lived at the same building as Eric Clapton, uh, the pheasantry in Chelsea. Uh, the front cover consists of a psychedelic collage with the centre title and the band name underneath. Uh, Martin Sharp attempted to capture the sound of the music on the cover, which he described as warm, fluorescent sound. It is quite something, isn't it? And the cover pretty much tells you what to expect inside. Uh, a kaleidoscope of psychedelic colours and self-assaulting self-indulgence. 
beautiful. Uh, in 2003, it was ranked number 114 of the Rolling Stone magazine's uh, list of 500 greatest albums of all time. And VH1 also named it their 87th greatest album of all time back in 2001. Strange brew. Should we get it on the turntable? Let's do this. Okay. Let's this, this beauty of play. Okay, I'll be back in a little while. That was marvellous. What a trip out that was. From start to finish. It literally does take you there. 1967, Psychedelics, Sergeant Pepper, oh, all of that and more. Very, very trippy and druggy orientated, I think. Uh, sounded great on record. Absolutely very quiet vinyl. Uh, Polydor done a very nice job on this, the pressing. Right, so let's quickly go through the songs. Quickly, yeah, right, strike me like that if it happens. Right, obviously it kicks off with Strange Brew Kill what's inside of you This is one of them When you think of them clubs like UFO Club With Pink Floyd and the, the liquid all over the walls If you had to do a top 10 or top 20 Psychedelic anthems if you like Strange Brew would be in there It is amazing And it stands out as a rather co It's a very complex song um, and it's rather unusual that the fact that Eric Clapton uses reverb so awesome. In some parts, it even sounds like it was triple tracked. Incredible. And his chord changes are so addictive. Bloody brilliant. I think they was mixing their drugs, hence. Strange brew. Um, that's followed by the sunshine of your love. You know, so the, what another brilliant song with that awesome do 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 Instantly recognisable. What a brilliant guitar riff. Um, and I think it actually started off Jack Bruce working that out um, because they attended... Uh, a concert, in, where was it, Savile Theatre in London in 1967, in January, and they see the Jimi Hendrix experience. And I don't think, up until that point, Jack Bruce had actually got Jimi Hendrix. Well, according to Clapton, anyway. Um, and after that, I mean, apparently the show that they went and see was blinding. right? And after that, Jack went home. And he, he he done the song. He made the riff. And they built the song on top of that riff. Um, it's another. Oh, that's just amazing. Um, that's followed by World of Pain. Outside my window is a tree. Bloody marvellous. Uh, and it's another trippy classic song. Um, the harmonies are simply sublime. With some really complex, crazy guitar. Um, the drums. <sighs> I'll get the Ginger Baker in a little while. He blows your mind. He's that good. Um, yeah, they definitely was indulging in the psychedelic drugs of 67. Um, if you haven't played this for a while, dig out Disraeli Gears Put on World of Pain, sit back and have a listen. It will blow your mind. It's that good. Um, that's followed by um, 
dance the night away. And this perfectly encapsulates the point where blues got psychedelic and then become heavy. Bloody brilliant. Again, and lovely harmonies. And Ginger Baker again, his drums. Spot on. I, I can't fault it. Um, and then side one closes with Blue Condition. Now, this is a completely different feel, but it closes side one perfectly, I think. The lyrics and vocals are by Ginger Baker. Um, and it's a sort of slow, drum-pounding piece um, about Ginger describing what it's like to be depressed. You know, he's feeling a little bit down, no relaxation. You know, so, yeah, he's feeling depressed, or, if you like, blue. So, in essence, Ginger Baker's in a blue condition. Great way to uh, close side one. Now we flip over and back to Trippyville again. Starts off with the tales of brave Ulysses. And this was inspired, I think, um, or so I've read. Eric Clapton was visiting the Greek Isles um, and Ulysses, um, also known as Odysseus, is a character in Greek mythology. I think they was into that. I mean, it does go with the whole thing, doesn't it? He was the subject of the book, The Odyssey, you know, Homer's Odyssey. Um, this song features the earliest uses of the wah-wah pedal, which Clapton uh, plays throughout the whole song. Very trippy, very trippy lyrics. Uh, but this rocks. And it was actually the B-side to the single Strange Brew uh, in June of 1967 several months ahead of the album. Bloody marvellous. That's followed by another bloody marvellous song. Right. Swabbler. I think it's pronounced Slobber. Uh, S-W-L-A-B-R. And apparently it's, it's an initialism. So it actually stands for She Walks Like a Bearded Rainbow. Although Jack Bruce later commented that the W stands for was, so she was like a bearded rainbow. Like it makes any difference. How trippy is that? And it was confirmed in 2006 by co-writer Peter Brown. And I think it's about a girl who just fits perfectly, like, like in Sid Barrett's bike, fits perfectly into your world. And it's about, I think, LSD and sex with her, you know, I think, I think, brilliant, very LSD orientated song, but bloody brilliant, um, that's followed by We're Going Wrong, the drum patterns are simply mesmerising, um, and I'm not sure if it's, he's singing, Jack Bruce is singing to either a girl or society that things are going wrong, but it's, it's done with such conviction, it's beautiful. Bruce's vocals on this one is falsetto, um, and it's accompanied by a lovely slow bass line and a bluesy psychedelic guitar melody. Um, but Baker's drumming is often frenetic and fast paced, making it at odds with the rest of the instruments, but it just fits so well. It's unbelievable, what a track. And then that's followed by Outside Woman Blues. And this is a bluesy song, very bluesy. Uh, originally recorded by Blind Joe Reynolds in 1929. The song features different drum fills by Ginger Baker on nearly every measure. And that makes it perhaps quite unique in the history of music. Terrific. Um, and then it's followed by Take It Back. Take it back, that harmonica. Take that thing right out of here. Um, I think it's about, it's another great rock song, and I think it's about them saying, look, don't go to war, take your draft card back. Just, you know, take it back. Brilliant, brilliant song. And now, honestly, you find yourself just going with it. It's that good. Um, and then the album closes with Mother's Lament. A baby is washed down the plug hole. 
<laughs> it's brilliant. It's like they're having a bit of a laugh with it. Um, fantastic. And it does calm you down after this. I can only imagine what it was like at that time. You know, all the people turning on, tuning in and dropping out. And then listening to that album and then that last bit. It would freak you out, I think. Um, an amazing album. This is, if you haven't got Disraeli gears in your collection, sort it out. It's fantastic. If you like psychedelic rock, you know, I do, I, you know, I really do, and this is like up there, it's one of them ones that's just so good. Um, one thing that's very, very clear, absolutely crystal clear, they are, all three of them are amazing musicians in their own right. I mean, Jack Bruce's bass lines, his timing, it's unbelievable. It's, it's so precise. It's just so good. Ginger Baker's drumming, he's up there. I'm not even joking, he's up there with Keith Moon, and you know how I feel about Keith Moon's drumming. He's up there, he's, he's just amazing. And as for Eric Clapton, what can you say? No wonder during that time in the 60s, people in London was writing, Clapton is God. I mean, he's earned it. His guitaring on this particular album is something else. It really, really is. Um, they're all right at the top of their game. Clapton, Baker and Jack Bruce. They are cream. Fantastic. Another wonderful album from that era, 1967, that ye wonderful year for music. I mean, Sgt. Pepper, Pink Floyd's The Piper at the Gates of Dawn, The Jimi Hendrix Experience, Are You Experienced, uh, The Rolling Stones, Satanic Majesty's Request, Love Forever Changes, uh, The Velvet Underground and Nico. Um, the Velvet Underground and Nico, Andy Warhol, The Kinks, Something Else, and The Who Sell Out. I mean, wow. <laughs> right? Wow. So, yeah, absolutely over the moon with owning Disraeli gears on vinyl. It will sit in nicely with me uh, psychedelics. Is there any other Cream albums I should listen to? It's the only one I know. Obviously, I've got to delve into some more Eric Clapton and find out a bit more about Jack Bruce and Ginger Baker. They are so good, guys. Really are good. Um, so, yeah. Sorry you had to wait so long for this video, guys. But, as you know, I've not been too well, but I'm pretty much there now. Not 100%, but we're getting there. Um, before I sign off, don't forget, hit me up on Facebook. Um, also, I've got Twitter, so you can tweet, and I can tweet, and obviously if you want to support the channel, you want to support Stripey Rambles, I do have my Patreon, and I'll put all the links to those below. Um, yeah, it's the weekend now, have yourselves a fantastic weekend, and I'll be back with another ramble real soon. Take care, guys.